My next guest is really royal. Royalty. Royalty from the standpoint where as we celebrate National Women's Month, we look at some of our women who are in positions of authority and power. But then again, somebody with a pitch message, but Erwin, they're all in authority and power. Yeah, but, you know, when they put on the uniform. And one of the things we must say is that our people of Jamaican extraction and Caribbean extraction find ourselves in critical roles in this country. We're very proud of that. We're very proud of that and contributing. And so tonight in this segment, we have one such. Welcome back to The Fact of the Matter, right here on 93.5. Samuel Carson on the Bridge FM in Jamaica, 99 in Jamaica. We say good evening to all our listeners and thank you for staying with us. My guests tonight in this segment as we highlight and pay justice and say thank you, thank you, is she's a sergeant major. And ladies and gentlemen, after finishing, I give her a name. I want you all to Google her because I'm not going to do justice to all the things that she has done and the decoration, the, 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 the honors and awards that she has received. Too many to mention here, respectfully speaking. She was born in Spanish Town. Yes, Spanish Town, Jamaica. I'm not going to tell you the day that she born because she's still a young woman. And she migrated to the United States in 1997 as an international student. She enlisted in the United States Army in March 2004, completed basic combat training and advanced individual training for paralegal specialist at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and is a member of the Judge Advocate General's Corps. So she's like a jag. Yeah, you know that show? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman has served us in Afghanistan, in Kuwait, and several places in the world. She has received many accommodations, and she's well decorated. When you look at her upper torso, it's covered in decorations because of her services to this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome on the fact of the matter, our special guest as we celebrate National Women's Month, Sergeant Major Peter Gale Drummond. Good evening, Sergeant Major. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? Well, I'm standing at attention. Can you tell me to relax now? <laughs> <laughs> you can. At ease. At ease. Oh, thank you. <sighs> you know, in, first of all, welcome and thank you for taking time out um, for a little chat with us here on Jamaican Radio, Caribbean Radio, you know, to kind of big you up somewhat and hear a little bit about you and, you know, what what you're doing in your world. And we will just want to take time to say thank you for our services to these United States. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I couldn't do it without the support of the nation, support of my family and friends, and, you know, support of my peers that I work with. They're doing an amazing job. Indeed. So, all right. So you come from Spanish Town, all right? Help me out here. Yeah. You, you, you're sure about that? You're sure about that? 100%. Can I, I hear it? I, I, test, no, I test in you. Say so it come from Spanish town and people listen to you now probably in Spanish town. Let me know say you really come from Spanish town. So call out some name now. Greendale. Tom Stupin. All, right, All right. Stop, 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 stop. stop. <laughs> I am convinced. <laughs> I, I am convinced. You see, you're a well-studied person, you know, so I am convinced. So, so your journey from Jamaica. Share with us Growing up as a child, um, Sergeant Major, what was it like? So, um, growing up in Jamaica was an amazing experience just because, you know, um, where I lived in Greendale, I had a lot of family around. Um, my auntie, I grew up with my aunt, my mom, my dad, aunties, uncles, cousins. And, you know, um, in Jamaica, it's not about just mom and dad. It's a village. The soul, right? Yeah. It's exactly. Mm -hmm. So, it's a village that. Um, raised a child literally in Jamaica and so I had a lot of I would say moms and dads that weren't necessarily my biological parents that were there and so it was a great experience for me growing up in Jamaica I went to um, St. 
St. Hughes High School huh? where is you know I met you have to yeah. draw, draw bricks now and shout out to the St. Hughes alumni al- alumni it's I mean, yeah man oh, 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 what what what, what yeah, yes yes so I went to St. Hughes High School and a lot of them may be tuning in right now so you know hi to everyone I don't want to call someone's name <laughs> specifically because to get upset that I missed it. but yes I wanted to highlight Mar because she she's the one who um you know called me and, and asked me to to take on yes. this um opportunity so I up yes, for indeed. That, so. indeed, indeed. So, so you you would have left. Um, you came to the United States to study, and what happened? So I came to the United States as an international student, and I went to LaGuardia, and then I went to Baruch. Um, and um, it so happened that I met up with one of my Jamaican friends who actually lived in Greendale too. We ended up dating and got married. He joined the military um, before we actually got married, and then I joined the military after that. So 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 hold on. Now. Is him cause if you joined the military or there was a motive other additional motivation? Your studies was your studies towards that route? So well actually no, my studies was in business, right? My dad wanted me to do, you know, of course you come in from the Caribbean, it's all about um hospitality management. So basically that was what I was gearing towards mm-hmm. um when I came to America to go to college. But then when I got married, um being an international student and being married and going to school mm-hmm. and living upstate New York made it difficult for me to go to a four-year college because mm-hmm. upstate New York, where I was, didn't have a four-year college mm-hmm. close by. And mm-hmm. so I decided, you know, seeing that my my husband at the time was in the military, yes. um, I, I wanted to, to, you know, try that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, there were opportunities that the Army provided that interested me while yes. he was in, um, which was, you know, the Montgomery GI Bill and tuition assistance, yes. which helps, which helps you to um, helps you to pay for your college. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that those are the things that interested me mm-hmm. regarding um, the military, joining the military, yeah, yeah. Um, and and making making it a career. Right, but because in in so doing, the, the the careers are diverse. There there are pathways, and as you said, opportunities. Um, to subsidize your education whilst whilst gaining the the, the necessary um, I would say experience in various disciplines. Correct. Yes, you you just summed that up so well. I love that. <laughs> right. Let me let me ask you this now. The, the the whole situation. I see where you you there's some emphasis on the legal side and I and and and, and also on the instructing side. Share with us how that aspect of your responsibility fits into your whom you are now as a sergeant major so um so when you join the military you um when you go to what's called the MEP station where you know you meet up with a recruiter the recruiter takes you to MEPS and they you know look at the opportunities that's available to you based on a test result so based on the test result you can choose a multitude of job opportunities that the army has so Mm -hmm. um my ex-husband told me listen if you want to be in the military these are the jobs that i think would you would um, be best suited for and one of them was being a paralegal and um so when i joined the military i went to um aic which is the advanced individual training at at fort uh jackson Mm -hmm. it's now at fort lee virginia but that was at fort jackson and it's a 10-week uh three-day course and they teach you how to, you know, the basic things about how to be a paralegal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. that, right, it's just about, I'd say, 2 to 10% of what you learn as you do on-the-job training or yeah. as you experience certain things in the military. So mm-hmm. it was just a stepping stone so that when you go to your um, organization, there's, of course, organizational training and then additional institutional training as you develop through the years um, being in the military. Mm-hmm. So my current job right now as a SAR major is command paralegal, which is basically um, I do a lot of management of all the paralegals, the junior enlisted um, on the military installation that I'm at right now. I, I'm responsible for manpower management of those paralegals, professional development, health and welfare, mm-hmm. just general um, oversight over all the paralegals on the installation. Mm-hmm. And, and, and as a woman coming from Jamaica with all the foundation and the basics, I just know how to run things too. <laughs> so, yeah. 
you know, a lot of times people will say that, you know, the army teaches you how to be a leader. And I'm not taking away from that. It does. Yes. And, you know, you have to be receptive to that. But I grew up with a mom who was still going to school while I was at home, you mm-hmm. know, going to St. Jude's High School, coming home, or St. Jude's Prep when I used to go there. Mm-hmm. And I'd come home, mom is studying to be, you know, um, to work in life insurance. And I saw that my mom was doing all these things as an independent, mm-hmm. single parent at the time. Right. And that set me up for success. So I think, not I think, I know that I drew a lot of that from my mother, Pauline Monica Henry Drummond, big up to my mom, <laughs> right? <laughs> So I took a lot of that strength yes. from her, yes. seeing her raise uh, me as a you know a single mom going to school and then and working full time because she used to work at um, National Water Commission at one point and then she worked at I think it was Alico Life Insurance mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so it it, it 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 you know she set that foundation right. for me. So when I came in the military, because I came in the military, they would say a little bit more senior. I was about 26, 27 years old. Mm-hmm. I had already had that foundation yes. from my parents, mm-hmm. from my auntie who helped raise me, my other aunts from Jamaica, and so it wasn't hard for me to adapt and overcome certain, you know, difficulties that uh, obstacles that uh, yeah. you know comes along with any job that you 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 do. So it wasn't just you know come in the army and you learn to be a leader. Right, it was right. a foundation prior to. And, and then, too, as a woman, too, you would have been exposed to women in leadership position and understand how they carry themselves and handle the role. So, therefore, you were not a, a newbie coming into this situation. You came in with a, a sense of confidence and purpose. Right. So, that, too, there, I, I can tell you, though, um, in the military, you know, at one point it was very male dominant, but now the military has changed so much where, it, you know, they, they're encouraging. Um, female soldiers to do a lot of other things that were normally um, made for the male soldiers, right? For, for example, Ranger, um, that was something that was um, originally tailored for male soldiers to participate. And now we have a lot of female soldiers, you know, um, doing that. So I think in the beginning, it was a little bit more difficult because I was looking for, you know, a strong black female as a role model and, and as a mentor in mm. the military. Not saying that they were, you know, that there were weren't any, but there weren't enough, enough right? right? So I can say, hey, I see this particular woman doing her thing. I would like to aspire to be that. And now, the army has changed so much that I can say yes. Mm. I can look and say, I see this strong black woman working in this particular position or doing this particular thing that you know mm-hmm. normally women women would not do. Mm-hmm. And so, I have that now. Soldiers have that. Um, to look forward to and you know they can reach out to folks for mentorship um, when it comes down to that too all right listen with a few moments we have left for oh yes I, I know know what I wanted to say uh, I was I was trying to tell you to shout out to your swan sisters so <laughs> yes swan <laughs> sisters from Jamaica and my St. Jude's prep and my St. Jude's high <laughs> ladies I wanted to say big yeah. up to you ladies you know you're still on my Facebook page, and I love you, ladies. Continue doing the great things that you're doing, you know, in this in this time where, you know, women are looked at, you know, as mentors and leaders. It's a great opportunity for you ladies to do the same thing, mentor, coach, and train the younger women that's coming up because we need it. They need it. Right. And, and what do you say to, to young ladies listening to you right now, um, uh, you know, opportun- seeking opportunities? What do you say to them in in preparation for such? What I would say is go after it, but be smart about it, right? Do your research, get guidance. Don't think that, um, you know, because younger folks sometimes they think they know every single thing. I'd say reach out to the seniors who've, who've had the experience in certain things. And I'll tell you this, sometimes we look at situations and say, well, you know, I, I don't want to listen to this person because of, you know, their experiences. But I'll tell you that whether it's good or bad, it's a learning opportunity. So you want to learn the good things um, for something that you are trying to achieve and the bad things about it, you know, the advantages and disadvantages. So take from them and then decide what you're going to utilize to progress in your career, your endeavors, whatever it is. So I'll say, you know, work hard at it. You know, reach out to folks who've experienced those things, get guidance and, 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 let the sky be your limit. Great. 
ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Sergeant Major Peter Gale Drummond, all the way from Spanish Stone. She's now stationed <laughs> at Fort Drum, upstate New York. You know, um, do, do you make it back to Jamaica pretty often? How often do you make it back to Jamaica? Well, man, I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have not been back in a while. All I right. will tell you that. So, um, so you know that you're due now? You're due. Yeah, right? I know I've been... I've been wanting to go, but with the COVID restrictions and requirements, you know, um, so eventually I'll make it back. I'm trying to see if I could, you know, visit sometime this year or, or next year. So, I, I, yes, I'm overdue. I need some guinea and, and right. mango and guac. And, listen, and, you know, and you know what? The next day you make it to, in Jamaica, we'll have a homegrown, homebred U.S. ambassador there. So when you go down, you can wear your uniform because, <laughs> because you will really, uh-huh. really, You'll be really, really welcome. But seriously speaking, I think, though, that young ladies listening to you tonight, not here in New York and in Jamaica, are inspired by what you have achieved and the way you have gone about it. And that's why um, you are our special, special guest here tonight. And we trust that you will remain strong in what you do, be purposeful, and continue to serve our nation in the capacities that you have chosen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, and, and that and that's why we, that's why I play this Taurus Riley music for you. That you are truly royal. It's not because you know, I looked at you and all. I looked at you and I saw all those medals on your upper torso and was totally blown away. So yes, you are truly royal. That, thank you so much. That's with the support of my peers, um, my superiors, my soldiers. I couldn't do it without them. I cannot tell you that those accomplishments were were self made. Of course. God had a hundred percent to do with it, and my peers, my subordinates, and my um, my leaders had a lot to do with it as well. So I, I thank them um, for what they've done and, and the things that they continue to do for the success of the United States Army. Sergeant Major Peter Gale Drummond, thank you very much. God bless you. We we'll talk to you again soon. God bless you. Thank you. All right, all right. She's totally, she's truly royal. Sergeant Peter Gale Drummond, hailing from. Spanish Town, past student of St. Hughes, sending a big shout out to our Swan sisters, serving the U.S. Army, serving us here in these United States. Our Major, a Major indeed, Sergeant Major Peter Gale Drummond, as we celebrate National Women's, or I should say, Women's Month.